It's an amazing story of determination and survival. Tonight, we visit with Texas Tech graduate student, Ellie Torres, who shares her battle with brain cancer. Plus, he's leading the Red Raider basketballers on the hardwood. We sit down with Coach Chris Walker and talk a new season of hoops. But first on Inside Texas Tech, life lessons from the Wizard of Oz, courtesy of Provost Dr. Bob Smith. Dr. Bob Smith serves as Provost and Senior Vice President at Texas Tech University. He's also the author of more than 300 articles and nine books. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Robert Giovanetti. As Paul Hunton tells us, Dr. Smith's newest book puts an interesting spin on learning life lessons from a classic film about a girl named Dorothy and her little dog, Toto. You love to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You find he is a wizard of Oz, if ever a wizard of Oz. If ever a wizard of Oz, the wizard of Oz is one because, 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 because. The Wizard of Oz is one of the most famous and beloved movies and book series in history. But for Dr. Bob Smith, provost at Texas Tech University, it has more significance than simply entertainment. A lot of people don't realize that it's a very archetypal story. It's a story of a group going out, being challenged, overcoming adversity, coming back and being empowered. And that's a classic format for stories throughout history. Dr. Smith is the author of over 300 articles in nine books. His newest book, The Way of Oz, A Guide to Wisdom, Heart, and Courage, takes the main characters of the story and finds deeper meaning in what they represent. The Scarecrow, of course, is, is learning and wisdom. The Tin Woodman is uh, heart and loving. The Cowardly Lion is uh, courage and serving. Dorothy, she's the leadership person. She's the one that has the savvy about planning and diversity and sustainability, political and scientific understanding and personal responsibility, and all wrapped up and directed towards the future. And of course the wizard is humility and related virtues such as empathy and beneficence and integrity, all with ethics in the lead. Tying those virtues to such beloved characters can help people remember their importance and also help them to apply those virtues in their own lives. A yellow brick road to leadership. Here's a way to remember some fundamental truths and fundamental directions and ideas around a story that will help people remember. Uh, so you remember it's, it's about learning, loving, serving, a focus on the future, and humility and other virtues with ethics in the lead. We're now joined by Texas Tech Chancellor Ken Hansen. And Chancellor, we just saw that story about Dr. Smith, the provost. Uh, tell us a little bit about, a lot of people don't know, what does the provost do? That's the chief academic officer. He makes sure that you've got plenty of classes, that you run them on time, uh, that you've got adequate faculty. Uh, he, he makes sure the right players are in the right position. And uh, there's no more important position uh, on uh, any college campus than provost. And uh, Bob Smith, uh, uh, when I interviewed him, uh, I, said, I told him that uh, the University of Arkansas had done a study on uh, the top 54 uh, research universities. And uh, I thought it was real good. And he said, well, I did the study. And so I still had a copy and I pulled it out and it said uh, it, it, he was the executive director of the study. And so, uh, you know, I knew he was well qualified. So Dr. Smith came here from the University of yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas. And he's been a big help to Dr. Skuvenek as interim because you have to have somebody here who's maybe familiar with what's going on and Dr. Smith. Well, gives us that. He, he has uh, he's helped, but, but one of the things that Dr. Skuvenek has to his advantage, he, he's been dean of arts and sciences. So he's been in the day to day operations. But, but the key for the provost is to be in day-to-day -day operations, be in touch with your deans, making sure the deans and department heads are, are having the right classes, making sure that students graduate on time, uh, pushing them to get their work in uh, so that they will have the appropriate graduation because we're encouraging students to try to get out in four years. It's better for them, it saves them more money, and uh, it also helps our standing. All right, Chancellor, we'll get back to you later on. Still to come on Inside Texas Tech, brain cancer is tragic at any age, but imagine being a college student and fighting back from this debilitating disease. Plus, students of Integrated Scholarship share their stories and their travels, but first we leave you with a look around campus. The ground has been broken on a new facility to house the Bob L. Hurd Department of Petroleum Engineering, welcoming a new era in petroleum engineering production and operations education. 
The new building will sit in the northeast corner of the Engineering Key. Upon completion, the building will be one of two standalone petroleum engineering departments in the country. And the TTU system hosted a reception introducing the Institute for the Study of Western Civilization and welcomed Dr. Stephen Balch, recipient of the President's National Humanities Medal and leading expert on Western Civilization. The Institute for the Study of Western Civilization will be part of the Honors College and foster research and investigation into the nature, origins, and future of the West. This new program will be the only university institute in the nation of its kind. That's your look around campus. Don't go anywhere. More Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Hans is coming right up. Welcome back to Inside Texas Tech. I'm Robert Giovanetti. Chancellor Hans joins us in just a moment, but first, She's a Texas Tech graduate student with an inspiring story of survival. Ellie Torres recently returned to campus after an eight-month battle with brain cancer. Our Keith Kohanek has her story. It was early April 2011 when Texas Tech accounting student Ellie Torres began waking up with headaches every morning. At first, she attributed her symptoms to stress. But then things started progressively getting worse. I started getting nauseous, dizzy, and started to lose my appetite. That's when she decided to see a doctor. He prescribed her medicine for what he thought was the flu or allergies. A week later, Torres felt even worse. She returned to the doctor who ordered an MRI. Torres was told to expect the results in three days. It was funny because the next day they called us and they're like, well, we have your MRI. And I was like, well, that was quick. And they're like, well, you know, we found something in your MRI and we think it's really important for you to see your doctor right away. He's like, there's a brain tumor. He's like, and it looks aggressive. He's like, it's a little bit larger than a golf ball. He's like, I, he's like, I can't tell you whether it's benign or malignant. He's like, all I can tell you is that you need to get treated right away. A week later, a neurosurgeon performed Torres's first operation. It lasted eight hours and was only the beginning. Everything was going so great in my life at that point in time. You know, I had just gotten accepted into graduate school. I had gotten this great internship opportunity and, you know, I had to just stop, you know, and give up my life to treat this nasty disease. But she wouldn't have to do it alone. She was introduced to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They took over her treatment from there. Whenever I got to St. Jude, I realized that I wasn't the only person going through this and I saw so many kids at such young age going through such a difficult time and seeing how positive and how happy they were, you know, it just kind of made me realize that I wasn't alone and that if they could do it, I could do it too. Six weeks of radiation, five months of chemo and another surgery later, she finally got good news. They did more MRI scans and they saw zero cancer cells and we hope to keep it that way. A great story there by Keith. And Chancellor, you are the one who originally brought Ellie to our attention. You've, you've met her before. Right. Uh, I, I found out in April of 2011 that she had stage four brain cancer and that uh, she had no insurance. And so the tech students got together and they raised a little money to help her parents. And, and we started trying to work with, with everyone involved to, to find a, a place for her to be operated on. Uh, she had her first surgery lasted eight hours and it was stage four and then later she had to have additional surgery and so she had to find someone that would do it uh, pro bono. What a delight Ellie is. Uh, I called her to cheer up and she wound up thanking me, you know, trying to cheer me up <laughs> and, and she had a four point and uh, we've got a lot of stories at Tech, uh, over 30,000 of them and great stories, but this is one that I thought that, that uh, we need to talk about, that she's back in school, she'll be getting her master's, she still has a four point, and she studies hard, she works hard, uh, did not have uh, the financial resources that uh, a lot of kids or most kids have, and yet she went through all this, and if you talk to her, she's determined to succeed, she's gonna do well in life, and I promise you, she will do well in life but the uh, cancer is gone, uh, in remission, and we uh, hope that it stays that way. And uh, I tell everybody, remember Ellie Torres in their prayers. 
Uh, she is top notch. She's a winner. You, you talked about that meeting where, where she ends up thanking you and making you feel better. Did, did it kind of catch you off guard? Do you thought going to see somebody like that, were you expecting her to be down and feeling? Well, so I, you know, I, I, I was uh, because uh, you're entitled to that. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, you need to be uh, uh, feel a little sorry for yourself and everything. And she was more worried about missing classes and things like that. And she was concentrating on that. I'm going to beat this. And uh, I thought at the time, if anyone can beat this, she can. And, uh, but it was just, it touched me in that her attitude, you know, attitude spills over to other people. She had an attitude of gratitude and it, it was uh, so positive. And I just, I thought that it's a story that needs to be told uh, because she's top notch. She's a champion and she is an inspiration to all of us that know her or that are ever around her. A chance to change the gears a little bit. Staying on students, we, we saw a little bit about Dr. Smith and the provost earlier, and I know he's big into integrated learning with our students. And, and, and talk a little bit about some things going on on campus because we do a really good job at Texas Tech getting our students out into the workplace. Well, integrated learning uh, is nothing more than uh, internships, uh, undergraduate and graduate research ship, you know, that, that we have. It may be uh, on-the-job training, working part-time and going to school part-time. Uh, you look at the internships. We have uh, interns that, uh, that go to Washington, D.C., and they live together in a dorm up there called Texas Tech House, and that uh, they work for various congressmen. A lot of people that are chief of staff now for various congressmen and press secretary are Texas Tech people. We have, in my opinion, an average uh, higher percentage uh, on the average of people with a Texas Tech degree working in the U.S. Capitol than any other school. You know, you learn a lot in class, but what you learn outside of class uh, in obtaining your degree will help you tremendously. And we encourage our students to be involved in extracurricular activities, but we always ask them to limit it to two, maybe three. There's 400 organizations you can join at Texas Tech. Now, I, I tell them, if you join all 400, you will not be invited, <laughs> invited back next year. You will flunk out. Uh, number one reason you're here, to get an education. Get a good education. That's what you're going to get at Texas Tech. Well, speaking of integrated learning, tonight we highlight Jane Ann Watson. She's the president of the TTU French Club, and as she tells us, studying in France was the opportunity of a lifetime. I spent my year abroad, my senior year abroad of high school in France. And uh, I just fell in love with the dynamics of French culture as well as the language. And it's just captivated me and I think it'll continue to do so in the future as well. I studied abroad in Montpellier uh, this past summer for six weeks. The program was fantastic. Our teacher really tried to get us to get out there and use our French and to learn and observe the people that were surrounding us in everyday life. and. Uh, to go take the opportunities we could to go get ourselves involved within the community and everything for just a month. And uh, it was just a really great experience. The French department holds um, every year, they just started last year, with a high school French day they, where we bring in all the surrounding high schools, the French classes, and bring them here to Texas Tech and show them what Texas Tech University has to offer them. We give them tours and uh, we tell them the financial aid and how Texas Tech can make it possible for them to learn and to grow in their education. And so I really would love to further my education um, to actually broaden my scope because even though you learn, you can only learn so much from your teachers here at, uh, for a certain amount of time, but I think then you need to move on and learn more from other people who have studied this particular degree. And uh, so I'm really hoping to further my education either through translation or uh, academia. Texas Tech offers you so much to do. There's so many things you get involved in here, but you have to make sure what you're getting involved in is something that you truly, truly want to be a part of, that you're passionate about or you love to do um, because that has to coincide with your acad academics. And um, if you're thriving in your academics but you don't like your organizations, you're not going to really get out there because you're going to concentrate on academics. But if you love both, I think that you will just naturally bounce them.
When we return, our Marcella Garcia sits down with Red Raider basketball coach Chris Walker. You're watching Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Ken Hans. It's new faces on the court and leading the charge for the Red Raider basketball team. Marcella Garcia sits down with head coach Chris Walker to find out how he plans to lead this Red Raider basketball team. Oh, basketball is a uh, it's a learning experience. It's life. Uh, there's a lot of lessons you learn. Uh, there's a lot of adversities, and it gives you a lot of chances to prove yourself uh, on the court. Coach Walker's got a tremendous amount of enthusiasm, and uh, he's kind of more of a, you know, he was a point guard, and he kind of brings that mentality out to the court as a coach. And uh, I think he's, I think he's uh, kind of has a little more freedom for the players. I think they're going to have a chance to uh, go out and play a little faster than we played in the past. And it's just a kind of a different philosophy. He pushed me as a player by, you know, staying on, staying on top of me, you know, teaching me right from wrong, uh, teaching me the good plays from bad plays and good shots from bad shots. And not be afraid. You got to want the ball. So if you get the ball here, Josh, you just know, especially if you're playing against us, and it's the white, what are they going to do? Trap. So you just can't get it in panic and just throw it. Come on, you got to sprint like you want the ball. Get it and attack. You're going to get a dunk. Communicator. I say he's real good at uh, communicating and letting us know like what he wants uh, done on the court. And I think Coach Walker, what he does is he's real positive with his teammates. I mean, with his players, and he gets confidence. Like he's real positive, and he makes sure that he, he lets you know he believes in you. You know, like that. And he's gonna push you also on the court. So far, I think he's pushed me. He's he's pushed me to be a better man on and off the court. I mean, stay focused uh, in the classroom, but also be on the court, be in the gym on my own, and get other teammates in the, in the gym. There are a lot of personalities. Uh, they're passionate, uh, sometimes too passionate. But uh, you know what? They, they're doing great, and, and they, they, they like each other. There's a capacity of caring there that I've never seen in a lot of teams. And, and they really, really want to learn. And it's very, very important to me that guys want to learn, because even myself, that's nothing. You know, you can, t you can definitely teach an old dog new trick. And these young guys, they definitely need to learn a lot. But, but again, they're open to that. And uh, one thing I tell them, if you open your heart, you know, you can open your mind. So if we can reach their hearts and make sure that we get instill in them the values that we want to instill in them, and then they start to listen to us, that's nothing we can't do. Robert, as you know, Coach Walker played at Villanova in the 90s, and he holds the record for the most attempted three-point shots in a single game with 20. Well, and, and I've spent a lot of time around him, and I know you have too, and he looks like he could still play a little bit. He's, he he's can, in great shape. Definitely, he can, and I think when I talked with Josh Gray, also one of the point guards right. on the team, he really likes the interaction because Coach Walker's been there. He was a point guard in college, so it really helps him out a lot too. And, and Coach Walker, with the team and with the fans, with everyone, He's got such a great personality, very infectious. I think it's gonna, people are going to catch on with that. Definitely. I'm really excited to see what he has to bring to the table this season. And, and you've talked to the players, and, and basically this is a six-month job interview for Coach Walker. He's got the interim label, but he could shed that at the end of the season, obviously, depending on what happens. And, and these guys seem to have bought into what he's, what he's talking to them about. Most definitely. All the players are really excited. They, they want to go out there and, and show us what they have. All right, Marshall. Thank you very much. Great job. And thank you for joining us. That's all the time we have tonight. Have a good evening.